In this video, we explore how and why data needs to be converted into binary to be processed by a computer. So we live in an analog world. All of our perceptions from sound to touch and sight can be measured on a continuous sinuating line. Take this simple example of turning a light on and off again. To us, it might appear that the light immediately changes from one state to another. If we could slow time down, however, we would notice a gradual increase of light followed by a gradual decrease, which can be represented by the curved line. Digital systems, such as computing devices, don't operate like this. In our digital representation, this light exists in one of two binary states, either on or off, and it switches instantly between them, as shown here. So let's remind ourselves what binary is. A binary digit, or bit, is a zero or a one. Having just two states makes it simple to build electronic devices that use these two states. For example, in RAM, data can be represented with capacitors. They either hold a charge, one, or they don't hold a charge, zero. Having further states would make the components more difficult to build and potentially more prone to error. Data on hard disk can be stored using magnetism with north and south polarity representing one or zero. Data on optical disks can be stored such that light from laser can either be reflected from the surface or not, zero or one. And data on memory sticks can be stored by trapped electrons or free electrons, zero or one. These items, such as memory and hard drives, will be very familiar to you. But if we look under the hood a little bit, in simple terms, a computer is made up of nothing more than millions and millions of tiny switches. These switches must be in either an on or off position, and therefore, of course, they can be represented easily by binary. A switch is either in the on position, which we can represent by a one, or an off position, which we can represent by a zero. Now this is handy because switches can then be used in a computer to make use of logic gates. Here we see an OR logic gate. Now we'll be going into logic gates in a lot more detail in other videos. But for now we can see how binary switches and logic gates all work together really well to make computers work. And this is why binary is eventually used to represent all forms of data. All these methods are simple to build components for, making them cheaper and more reliable. It was noticed that when you combine a series of bits, it's possible to represent any kind of data, text, images, sounds, and commands. These characteristics of binary were realized by Claude Shannon, a mathematician who is credited with the invention of the digital circuit design in 1937 that we still use to this very day. Thank you.